What's going on everybody and welcome to the Abs Gamer PlayStation VR 2 review. I picked this up about a week ago and I got the Horizon Call of the Mountain bundle as you can see here. And immediately upon unpackaging everything I noticed the real high build quality on everything. Not only the controllers but the headset itself. I thought it was really really nice looking. That being said, the headset was surprisingly light, and considering the technology that's packed into this headset, I thought that's pretty impressive. Overall, cosmetically, I think that the PlayStation VR 2 looks really nice uh, and goes really well with your PlayStation 5 ecosystem. Now onto the specs, it offers 4K, HDR, there's OLED lenses, 110 degrees field of view, eye tracking, and something really cool called foveated rendering, meaning anything that you're looking at is at higher qual a graphical fidelity, a sharp image, higher contrast, so people off screen may notice some pixelation at things you're not focused on, but within the unit itself, you do not notice this at all. I thought it worked amazingly, I thought it was intuitive, and I was really impressed, and it worked better than expected, to be honest with you. Upon booting up the headset, you will have uh, an, an automatic room scanning. Uh, you could also adjust this manually. It was really intuitive as well and pretty impressive. There are some caveats to the PlayStation VR 2, so I'd like to talk about not only the pros, but the cons as well. But first, let's talk about the pros. First game I booted up was Horizon Call of the Mountain, and immediately I noticed the high graphical fidelity um, and how much we've come, how far we've come comparatively uh, to the PSVR, the original. Um, six years have passed, and you can definitely tell how far the technology has advanced uh, in terms of graphics, in terms of um, intuitiveness with the controllers. There's a lot of climbing in this game, um, so if you have a smaller in-room game setup, I would Keep that in mind as I actually broke one of my ceiling lights reaching. So you're going to be doing a lot of reaching, a lot of arm movements. So keep that in mind. Yeah, I was not impressed with that. And uh, here's my light right here, actually. Yeah. Next game I tried was Gran Turismo 7. So uh, I was really impressed with this. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say this is probably the best driving simulation you will experience on a VR headset bar none. So if you are thinking of picking up a PSVR 2, you owe it to yourself to pick up GT7 as well. There are also some in-ear uh, earphones that are included with the unit itself. And those snap right into the headset. And there's actually a really cool little holder for them as well. So I thought that was a nice addition. The headset itself, um, it connects to the PlayStation 5 via USB-C cable. So it's really, really cool, uh, really simple process. You just pretty much plug it right into the PlayStation 5 and you're up and running. So that's a stark difference compared to the PlayStation VR and the nightmare of wires that were included with that. It was just such a chore setting it up and I would avoid playing it just for that reason. So I'm glad they're done with that and they made it a lot simpler for us gamers. Moving on to the controllers, I must say I am glad that we are done with this PlayStation Move controllers. Uh, they were from the PS3 era. I just found like they wouldn't track well and they were just, I don't know, clunky and just thrown together for whatever reason to get that unit out there. So I'm glad that they moved on to the more of a modern and sleek uh, looking controllers and something that you would find more with higher end VR units uh, today. So as I said before, comparatively in weight, they are pretty similar. Uh, the PSVR 2, as I said, that all white design goes really well with your PS5. So if you're considering purchasing that and worried about cosmetics, don't be. It'll look great. Now on to the cons. There are some cons and one big one being the price. So the price of the unit, I know turns a lot of people off. It's more for the hardcore market right now, but who knows, it may change. I'm from Canada. It cost me $820 for the bundle. $750, it'll set you back for just the unit itself. The in-ear um, headphones are pretty underwhelming. I thought this was a missed opportunity for Sony. They, you know, as VR, is, it's heavily reliant on not only visuals, but audio. So if you do have to use some headphones, I would suggest some over-the-air headphones. I think that'll be a better bet for you. The charging station, although not included, but is a, an official PlayStation product, I do not recommend this because it has no LED indicators on the unit itself. And if you leave your controllers on it and it's not securely fastened to the magnetic holders, uh, it may not charge. 
I picked up this really cool stand off of Amazon. Uh, it looks really nice and it charges my controllers and holds my whole PSVR 2 composition in place and looks really nice in my game room setup. Another weird omission I thought was kind of odd is there was no demo disc included in the PlayStation VR 2. So considering the price, you think Sony would offer, you know, a, a, a best of launch game demos uh, that you can try out when you purchase the unit. So overall, should you buy this? I think if you are investing a lot of time into VR and if you are a VR enthusiast, I would say go for it. Obviously, if you have the money, if money is no option, that is a good option for you. If you are heavily invested in the PS, uh, sorry, the PlayStation ecosystem, then you know what? I, I would say go for it. Um, it all depends on if Sony is going to support it for years to come, which hopefully they do. And the overall, guys, I hope you like this video. If you like to see more, please like and subscribe, and I will be happy to make more for you. Have a great day.